Hi everyone, and welcome to the Full Stack with Swift course. My name is Vandot, and I'll be your host. Now, this course is something that I've been thinking about for a very long time. As you know, I actually, as you might know, I'm originally an iOS developer, and I've been doing iOS development since late 2007. And uh, when I started working with the iOS SDK, it really wasn't that much of an SDK. Uh, I think I just had a Mac mini, if I remember correctly. And we started just working with some broken SDK and APIs and some private APIs. And we also had to work with jailbroken iPhones because the SDK wasn't really uh, final at that point because Apple wanted to take iOS development into web development uh, direction. And I started then doing Flutter development uh, quite a long time ago, and I focused mainly on producing Flutter and full stack uh, video production on YouTube. Now, uh, and this has some. This has been something that's been boiling inside me for for a long time to start working a little bit more also on my original passion, which is iOS development. And this course is going to be a result of that. Now, before we get to actually talking more about the course, I just wanted to mention that this course is going to be a living, ongoing production. So this course doesn't have a point A to point B that we're going to like develop an application or a backend with Swift and be done with this course. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with my free full stack course, you probably already know that the goal of that course is also similar to this course. But this course is purely going to be working with Swift, and we're also going to do iOS development, Mac development, etc. So this course is not going to take us just from not knowing Swift into being able to develop one application. But the goal of this course is to go and deep dive into Swift development for iOS, Mac OS, Watch OS, and we may even get the time to work with TV OS, but I can't guarantee that because TV OS actually requires some more setup than a lot of people can have at home. Uh, and then we're also going to look at Swift for backend. But please just bear in mind that this course is not going to take you just say, let's develop this application or this backend. This course may be divided into hundreds of videos and we will be developing many different things with Swift and demonstrate the abilities of Swift and iOS, Mac OS and watchOS, for instance, development and also Swift for backend. If you're wondering, this course is not going to be for absolute beginners to programming. You already need to know another programming language, whether it is Python, Rust, C, C++, you name it, whatever it is, Kotlin, Java. But you need to at least know another programming language before you get started with this course. You may also be a Dart developer, such as like a Flutter developer who is already familiar with Dart. But if you don't know programming at all, then this course is not suited that well for you. So I suggest that you start learning the basics of software development and then just pick a programming language. I personally recommend Python as a first programming language. Now, uh, once you are past that hurdle, then you can come back to uh, this course and continue watching. Even if you're not familiar with any other programming language from before, you might have some value by watching this course, but I will be moving past the basics of Swift at least uh, when we get started with this course because I already assume that you know the basics of another programming language. But I will draw some conclusions between similarities and differences of Swift and other programming languages. So it helps if you know another language is what I'm trying to say. Now, for development of backend applications with Swift, you don't necessarily have to have a Macintosh. It can also be on Linux, uh, for instance. Uh, or I think it may also work on Windows. I haven't tested that, but Linux, I'm sure that you can run servers with Swift on Linux. Uh, but it does help if you do have a Macintosh because we're going to work a lot on UI kit, for instance, and Swift UI. And uh, we will uh, go through these frameworks quite a lot. So for those, you need to have a Macintosh. Uh, so what I'm trying to say that, unfortunately, if you're, for instance, a Windows user, uh, it, it, I think it will be very difficult for you to follow through with the, with the entire course. You may still have some value by watching the videos and maybe just practicing at university if you have access to a Macintosh or a Macintosh that you can maybe borrow from a friend or a family member. But uh, unfortunately, it is outside my control. It is the direction that Apple has gone into that you have to have a Macintosh in order to have access to some of the resources that such as 
as Xcode. So um, just so you know, having a Macintosh is a huge plus before continuing with this course. Now, uh, we will be working, as I said, this course doesn't have like a point A to point B. It will have um, many, many different videos uh, that will work on many different things. For instance, one video may, might be just completely dedicated to Swift Playgrounds. Another one may be dedicated to basics of Swift. Another one, UI kit, Swift UI. And there may be actually tens of videos that are dedicated to UI kits separately. Uh, each video, if there is a lot of code inside that video, I will be creating a separate GitHub repository for those videos alone. So we won't have just one giant GitHub repository that hosts all the code, because in my opinion, that is kind of like difficult to maintain both for me and also for you to know which folder contains the source code for which video. If the case is that the video needs to have a GitHub repository, I will post the GitHub repository in the video description. So, uh, so that you know that. Uh, we will cover Swift uh, as a language first before we get started with the rest of the chapters in this course. So it is important that we learn Swift first um, because all the other chapters are going to use Swift as a program language, if, even if we're working with UIKit or Swift UI or, uh, for instance, Vapor for our backend. So uh, you should be expecting a lot of Swift material in this course or playlist. As I mentioned before, we will cover UIKit. We will talk a lot about Swift UI, and we will also talk about Swift for a backend, inclusive Vapor, but not um, excluding all the other backends. We will talk a lot about various backends for uh, that are available for Swift de developers. We will also talk about CocoaPods and Swift Package Manager as a dependency management. So for those of you who are familiar already with Swift um, Package Manager SPM and not familiar with CocoaPods, you can learn about that and vice versa as well. Before getting started, you need to install Xcode from the App Store. So on your Macintosh, just simply open App Store and search for Xcode, and you can just download Xcode. You don't have to have a developer account or anything, just download it and install it on your computer. And it really helps if you have the latest version of everything, basically just the latest version of Mac OS and the latest version of Xcode as well installed on your computer, because some of the features that I'll be talking about that are completely new to Swift may not be available in older versions of Swift, which may be installed with the Xcode that you have installed on your computer. So just please ensure you have the latest version of Xcode and your Mac OS. Now, uh, before we get started, I just want to mention that uh, about 52% of people watching my videos have still not subscribed to my channel. It would mean a lot to me if you did, please. You get notified about new videos coming and I might be planning on releasing some stuff that is only exclusive to my uh, subscribers. So it would mean a lot if you could just please subscribe to my channel before we get started. For those of you who want to support me in this journey and also producing other videos on YouTube, you can either press the thanks button at the bottom of any video that you have enjoyed. There is a big thanks button. And also you could join my channel by just pressing the join button on my YouTube channel. That would also uh, make me really happy. It is completely optional though. You don't have to do that. Now, uh, without further ado, let's just jump into the course. and. Uh, I actually need to also mention something uh, that there will be new videos uploaded. So if you're, if you're seeing this video and there's no more videos right after this, this is simply because of the living nature of this video or the other videos. So if you hit the end of the playlist, it is not the end of the course. It is going to be an ongoing course. I hope it will never actually end really because uh, iOS development, macOS and watchOS development and development of uh, Swift backends is a never ending story. So this playlist should kind of be reflecting that uh, reality. So, uh, however, if you hit the end of the playlist, just know that I'm working on new videos for you and you're always uh, welcome to also give me some ideas on what you want me to work on and what you'd like to see as part of this playlist. So now without further ado, let's get into it. 